sing a song Miss Dolores requested. Y'all are already doing it, but why don't y'all mingle some more and tell somebody this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. How I rejoice and be glad in rejoice can you do better than that hallelujah. hallelujah now if you're going to really rejoice the word means to jump up and down and spin about wildly <laughs> that's what it means in the greek amen wow it is so cool to be with you guys on a wednesday night it's been like two months since i've been here on a wednesday and it's just killing me but uh, i've been in town on a manager's meeting so hallelujah i've only got about a month of this travel mess to go and my life should get back to some, some semblance of normal. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Look at your neighbor and say, thank you for being faithful tonight. The Word of God says that we're to come together all the more as we see the day approaching, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And I'm glad you're here tonight. Amen. Why don't we lift our hands? Father, we love you. You're an awesome God, and we just bless your name. Lord, you've been better to us than we deserve. Your love was poured out because of grace, not because of anything we've done to earn it, but because simply you looked down and you chose to set your love upon me, upon us. For that, Master, we say thank you. We don't deserve it, but, Lord, we receive it by faith tonight. Lord, I pray that you just open the floodgates of heaven over this house. Let the love of Jesus be manifested. Father, I thank you for the, the lives that were changed here Sunday morning. I don't even, I lost count how many people got saved here around these altars Sunday. I, I thank you for touching and awakening, God, the lives of men and women. Lord, it's your grace, your grace, your grace. We say thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you that the prodigals are coming home. Thank you, Lord, that you're breaking chains over lives we trust you to show up and to show yourself strong tonight holy spirit come on in fill us to overflow and is my prayer in the mighty name of jesus and everybody said even though i walk through the valley of the shadow If my 
formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name. Declare it tonight. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name.
wake up joy in the middle of sorrows. I take up peace in the middle of stress. I take up courage in the middle of fear. Oh, this is how I fight. Oh, this is how I fight. I take up joy in the middle of depression. I take up fear. I take up courage in the middle of fear. I take up hope through anxiety. Oh, this is how I fight. Oh, this is how I fight. Oh, this is how I fight. I won't give up. I won't give in. Oh, I will fight the fight and win the war. Yes, I will fight the fight and win the war. Would you declare that? I will fight the fight and win the war. Yes, I will fight the fight and win the war. Because this is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. Oh, this is how I fight. I sing in the spirit. That's how I fight. I pray in the spirit with understanding and without. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. 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 Won't you lift your hands? Come on, I don't. Lift your hands. Receive his joy in suffering. Lift your hands and receive the peace of God in the midst of sorrow. Receive, receive. Receive from the Lord tonight. I just see that I see with our hands lifted high and surrender he's pouring out his gifts among his children tonight he's pouring it out now right now right now he's pouring it out to you that trust him that believe in him he's here to give you good things he's here to give you good things he's here to give you good things he's not a God that he should lie he's not a God that he should lie good things for you. He wants good things for you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stay.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Father, thank you for the call tonight. Lord, I thank you that the deep of God is calling right now to the deep of our soul. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we have an opportunity to respond to your call. Just to simply say that eternal yes. Yes, Lord. I'll go where you lead me. Yes, Lord, I'll do what you ask me. I'm going to follow you with my whole heart. I'll Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me so much. For giving me an ear to hear that call. Your voice. The voice of God walking in the garden, in our garden today. Adam may have hidden from that call, but Father God, tonight we're responding. Drawing near to you, saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Master. Jesus name amen 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 come on give him a hand clap of praise he's worthy I love worshiping with you guys tonight we're going to be so blessed I don't want to I don't want to puff anybody up but I can't say how much I'm proud of this man of God that's going to preach to us tonight. Came in here, got, got into that school of ministry and dug, and the enemy just kind of lifted one, one roadblock after the next, after the next. Walter Quibido just kept pressing because he heard a call of God. Come on, y'all. If you can be stopped, if you can be, uh, if you can be discouraged from following what God's told you to do, you will be discouraged. But you got to get to the point where you know I've heard his voice. And I'm going to follow him. Why don't you give the Lord a big clap offering as Walter Quibido comes to preach the gospel tonight. Amen. I give God all the praise. opening well tonight Sunday morning pastor gave an absolutely awesome awesome message I mean just I mean seriously if there was anything in the house that could have been shaken it was shaken I, I mean it was just absolutely awesome and 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 through that message through that message it connected it connected with my spirit and God gave me something that I just want to keep on talking about. So, so just to let y'all know, uh, the name of my message tonight is, Which Tree Are You Camping Under? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody knows that there was two trees in the garden. Well, uh, hold on one second. Let me get, let me get my deal right here because i got to get it right. So, if anybody ever watched Fox News... Usually every single one of them, they start out with a opening statement. So, this is my opening statement to the message because everything that I've got to talk to you tonight after my opening statement is strictly the Word of God. Strictly the Word of God. So there's, there, there's, there's nothing that I can add to it because if anything can move the heart of God's people in the heart of the of, of people that is in, that is lost in decisions and in in uh, um, uh, this world that we are in and being deceived, it's God's word and it's it God's word's the only thing that could possibly possibly do that. I, I just I'm I'm just a spokesperson, but of course I need to talk about the two trees in the garden, and my opening statement is this. That both trees were in the middle of the garden. 
So where was both trees at? In the middle. They were both in the middle. And it just so happened that God, whenever he designed and he breathed life into Adam, he talked to Adam about one Pacific tree that he was not to partake of. But besides that, he told him in Genesis, this is part of my opening statement, let me get there real quick. In Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, and let's see here, chapter or verse 15, and I'm in the NIV. The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden. So what did he tell him? He said, listen, he said, you may freely eat of all these trees. Every single one that's in the garden. And then he goes on to say, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of its fruit, you are sure to die. Sure to die. So, now let's go and give you a little detail on this. It had to have been a little while uh, that God, God created woman and, and, and Adam and Eve, I'm sure, had a, had a great honeymoon and everything in the garden. And, and I'm sure that years, possibly years, it, we don't know, years had to have gone by. I mean, really, seriously, had to have gone by. But God didn't tell Eve what, she to, what he told Adam because Adam was the head of the household. Adam was the was the, the 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 guard and tender. He was the priest of his family, and God gave him the rights to tell his wife about the tree. Now, it had to be years that gone by because they could. I mean, and and the love for his wife had to have grown just just. To no ends. And I'm sure that, you know, they were dancing around the garden just as happy-go-lucky and everything else. And, 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 and I'm sure that somehow or another they was dancing in the middle of the garden. And, and Eve's like, what's that? And Adam's like, oh, that tree? Well, yeah, that tree, we must not eat of it or even touch it or you'll die. Now listen, the only thing about that is, is, is that's part truth of what God told him. He didn't, he, it, listen to me, this is something that I want you to get because this is what God told me. God told me, listen, there's a lot of people that face temptations not having that, 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 that rhema word of God, not having a fear of God in their life. So the key of that is, is she was told this, and Adam must have told her this without really expressing what God really meant by that command. Because they took it lightly. She took it lightly. I mean, come on. They even camped up underneath it, as Pastor said, Sunday. So I'm just kind of curious if this woman was told that, listen, you can't eat of that tree, and you can't even touch of that tree, or you'll die. Why in the world were they camping under it? I mean, you ever think about that for a minute. I mean, so what that tells me, and, and, I, and I ask the Lord to forgive me if I'm talking to Adam wrong and everything else, but the thing about it is, is Adam didn't portray what God told him about that tree to his wife in a way that she would fear that tree. She would fear disobedience to God. So it was, it was a mediocre thing. It had to be. Or like I said, they wouldn't be camping up underneath it. And you know, what God showed me about that is, is it's, it's just like this pulpit. If I'm standing behind this pulpit and I'm preaching the Word of God, but I'm only preaching it halfway, and I'm not preaching it the way God 
God has spoken it through me to speak to the people out there, then you know what? You're going to walk out of here with less fear of God and less fear of His Word than what the Word actually is. There's a lot of half-truths getting preached. And think about this. There's a sign of it going on. Look outside. Everybody's camping underneath the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of camping up underneath the tree of life. So hallelujah, I'm here to say I know that I'm live and I'm glad I'm live because you know what? I want to point to you for a minute. I'm talking to those out there camping underneath that tree tonight. I want you to listen to the Word of God and I want you to understand what sin is. And listen to what he says about it. Because listen, you can be deceived. And just as Pastor just got through saying, if you're, if, if you're willing and obedient to be deceived, you're going to be deceived. And if you don't know the Word of God, it's going to be very easy for you to be deceived just as Eve was deceived. Hallelujah. So Satan decided to come up to Eve and when she was camping up underneath the tree there. Oh, yes, and the serpent said in chapter 3, verse 1, the serpent was, was, was the, uh, the, the shrewdest of all the wild animals in the Lord God had made, uh, that the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat of the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Hello, people, what is that? It's a lie. It's a lie. Because we just got through reading that God told them they may freely eat of all the fruit in the garden. But Satan added, as Pastor said, twisted it around a little to make it now really sound like God was holding something back. You follow me? So, so, so it even enticed her even more. <laughs> of course we may eat from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. <laughs> I mean, hello. It's a blonde moment there. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. How many trees in the middle of the garden? There's two trees in the middle of the garden. She's already, she already took the bait. Now she's saying that, of course, it said, uh, um, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat, God said, comma, you must not eat it. Or even touch it. If you do, you will die. God didn't say that. That's what I was trying to get to. Listen, Adam had to be the one to tell Eve that. And it was distorted. It was distorted. Listen to me. If you're worried about what the preacher's got to say, get in the word for yourself. Read the word. Get it in your heart. That way when you're sitting in the pew and, 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 and someone that's up here that has is, that is allowed the deceiver to work through him starts speaking words and twisted them in the Bible, you need to stand up and say, that's not so. But the only way that you're going to be able to do that is you must be camping underneath the tree of life. And as Pastor said Sunday... Eating it freely every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Every day. So, to end my opening statement is this. That the message in God's word is a message to show you and to open your eyes and not to be deceived of what sin is. And what will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But also, the message will... Also, go through having victory over sin. So, that way we'll be able to have the victory over sin. Hold on one second. And, so we're going to go through, right now, we're going to go through the manifestations of a fleshly life. Which is camping underneath the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the funny thing is, is I really think that a lot of the reasons why we camp up underneath that tree is because we're just waiting for temptations to come by. We're just waiting to be tempted, waiting to be lied to, waiting to have an excuse because, because we're already in a deceived nature. We're, 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 we're born in sin. 
That's exactly what God's word says. We're born in sin because of this incident that did happen. Hallelujah. So let's get there. Manifestations of a fleshly life. Let's turn to Mark chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Mark chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Everybody that's there, say amen, and everybody that's not, we'll hold on. Okay. It says, For from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. The reason these things come from within is because we're already born in them. We're born in them. So, Romans chapter 1 and verse 29. We're going to get everybody to know their books. Like them pages. Just if you're looking for Romans, it's right past Acts. Romans 1, 29 says, Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness. This is camping underneath the wrong tree. Okay? I want you to, I want you to keep that in mind. Every kind of wickedness. Sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent. I, I think that's how you... Uh, okay. Proud and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand. They break their promises and are heartless and have no mercy. That is 23 sins in those verses that will damn your soul to hell right there. Three, 23 of them. Now we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. We're going to speak of 10 classes of people that will be lost. 6 verse 9. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. None of these. Now, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna, we're gonna switch camps. Now we're going to go to the tree of life. This is the manifestations of spiritual life. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I've got to read the whole chapter. Hallelujah. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would be only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but did not love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor, and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about. But if I, didn't have lo if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous 
or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about insult, injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. But love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will be useless. When I was a child, I spoke and I thought and I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. And that I know now is partial and incomplete. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. So three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And you will find all of those underneath the tree of life. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, 9. Galatians, Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9. For this light within you produces only what is good and is right and true. Goodness, righteousness, and truth will be found whenever you're pitching a tent underneath the tree of life. Then we're going to turn to Philippians 4.8. Next page, Philippians 4.8. Hallelujah. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will find those underneath the tree of life when you're partaking of the fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. I read two scenarios of where you will camp at. You're either going to camp underneath the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or you're going to camp underneath the tree of life. So, I believe that now I want to let you know what really comes from camping underneath the tree of life and for partaking of the fruit Every single day of the tree of life. And I want to give you this because I want you to understand the goodness of camping underneath that tree. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. I'm sorry, 13 through 26. Hallelujah. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, partaking of the tree of life. And throw that one in there. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another... Watch out. Beware of destroying one another. I got to 
take a second on that one and just to kind of let you know something on that. He's addressing the Christians. The Christians of the day. And what, what basically was just read, I want to give you a, a scenario of what it does. And this is what it does. I don't know if anybody's ever cooked crab. Anybody ever cooked crab? You have a big old pot of boiling water, and you throw all these live crabs into the boiling water. But what, what's really funny about that is, is some of the crabs have an idea, I'm going to get out of this boiling water. So they stick their claw up there and they grab a hold of the top of that rim of that thing and they're pulling their self up. But what happens is the others in the pot keeps clawing. And it keeps dragging them back down into the water. Till the whole church is destroyed. So the whole key that I'm trying to express here is this. That listen, we are to love one another. We are not to be envious of any brother and sister in this house. Because listen, if they go to the next step, instead of the crabs pulling them back down, they're going to be pulling you up. So the whole deal in that is, is we build each other up through our love from one from another. But when we start biting and we start gnawing and we start clawing and we start saying bad things about our brothers and sisters or or, or we start getting envious about what they're doing and how they're doing it and how God's blessing them and how the Holy Spirit is upon them and I don't understand why it's upon me. Well, I think that's just, I think they're just playing games, man. And the next thing you know, you're, you're, you're dragging them right back down. We're not to drag them down. We're to build them up. We're to, we're, we're to build each other up. And, and, and I'm, I, just, I, I just think of how great the church of God would be if everybody built each other up and was not envious, not proud, not wanting to be them, but be yourself. God is called, God is, God has got you here for a purpose. And you know what? There's a lot of other people here for a purpose too. And there's a lot of them that's already been in it enough and it's and it's opened up God's word enough and it's really crammed themselves full of the tree of life that they realized what that purpose is because they allowed God to speak to them instead of just coming in and think God's just going to slap you in the face with it. Hey, this is what you're supposed to do. Now go do it. Listen, get into God's word. Get into it and learn how learn how to love. Learn how to talk to people with love. Hey, it's hey, I'm it's it it's a hard thing to do. But it's easy to do if you're eating and partaking of the tree of life each and every day. Hallelujah. Now I'll get back to where I was at here. Mm. So dear brothers and sisters, If I was still preaching that you must be circumcised, and some say I do, why am I still being persecuted? If I were no longer preaching salvation through the cross of Christ, am I? I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I was I was up above. That's down below. We'll get it right. But if you're always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. <clears throat> so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what is sinful, what your sinful nature craves. You know why you won't be doing what your sinful neighbor, nature craves? Because you're partaking of the fruit of the tree of life. You're not feeding that sinful man. You're, you're, you're feeding the spiritual man. Hallelujah. Camp under the right tree. Hallelujah. Mm, that sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, 
You are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. This is, this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, y'all. Okay? The desires are sinful nature. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostili- host- hostility, quarreling, jealous, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. You could... Take that to the bank. Hallelujah. God said it. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to His cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit leading in every part of our lives. Let us not be come conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Hallelujah. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Back to your left. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I love this verse. Hallelujah. This means, hallelujah, that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. That's the old to the new. Hallelujah. Now let's turn to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, 16 through 23. I told you tonight I'm just going let to the, let the word of God just, just preach to you. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing sweeter than the word of God. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 through 23. Don't you realize... That you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey. That's a question mark. Don't you realize that you become a slave to whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteousness living. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin... But now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery of sin. And you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which, which led you ever deeper into sin. Listen, you had no control. When you're, when you're living in sin, you have no control when you're a slave to sin. You don't have that ability to say, Satan, get thee behind me. You don't have that ability. That ability comes to you through the blood of Jesus Christ. It gives you the authority and the power to look at that look at that deceiver and tell him, "Get thee behind me. I don't have to follow you. I now have a choice that I can say no." And I today I say no. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Woo. Just say no. Hallelujah. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to the righteous living so that you will become holy. Hallelujah. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. 
And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things that you used to do. Things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and results in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus our Lord. I want to say that to every single person out there that's camping underneath the tree. Of good and evil. You have that choice tonight. You have that choice. And all you have to say is Jesus. I choose to obey you. I choose to live for you. It's your choice. Hallelujah. Now we're going to turn to Romans chapter 8. Well you don't have to turn. But just go right there. Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 through 13. Hallelujah. So now. That you just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I believe that there was some out there that did that. So I just want to let you know this. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to Him, the power of life-giving Spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his only son in a body like the in a body like the body we sinners have. And in that body God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about, those, those, uh, think about things that please the Spirit. Let me hold my finger right there. Those who camp up underneath the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thinks of nothing but evil. Because there's no good in it. But those who camp underneath the tree of life. Thinks of all good things. And how he can please God. And doesn't worry about waking up every morning. Thinking about what sin I'm going to commit today. How I'm going to do wrong to some person. The first thing that comes out of their lips is how great God is. And what he's brought me through. And how I want to go and I want to show his love to every single person that I come, and I come across. That's partaking of the tree of life. Hallelujah. So letting your sinful nature control your minds leads to death. But letting the spirit control your minds leads to a life. And peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why we are still under the control, or that's, that's why those who are still under, under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature, you are controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God living in you. Hallelujah. How many people in here has got the Spirit of God living in them? Everybody in the house should raise your hand. If not, come on up to the altar. In fact, run. Hallelujah. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. Hmm. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life. Because you have been made right with God. 
The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies and by the same Spirit that is living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Kick the devil out the door. Hallelujah, that song was just perfect for this sermon. I'm telling you, stomp on his head. Get him under your feet. Jump up and down all over him. Let him know who you belong to. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Man. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every single day. There is new life every day. Every day. Hallelujah. God. For all who is led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we call Him Abba. Father, for His Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are God's children and His heirs, in fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share His glory, we must also be sharing in His suffering. And I think I went just a little bit too far, but that's okay. Now we'll go to 1 John chapter 2. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Everybody can say hallelujah. Oh, I mean, this is the most Bible reading I've done in a week. Hallelujah. Woo! First James. I'm sorry, First John. I'll get there. I was trying to confuse everybody. First John, chapter 2, verse 29. 229. And it says, Since we know that Christ is is righteous. We also know that all who do what is right are God's children. Now go to chapter 3. We're going to read verses 5 through 10. Hallelujah. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. And there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in Him will not sin. I'm sorry, let me read that again. I think some people got that wrong. Because see, a lot of Christians walk around saying, Well, I'm a sinner. i got to come to the altar again. Listen to me. You're to live a holy life before God. And if you're partaking of the fruit of of the tree of life every day, your goal is not to go out and sin. Your goal is to live a holy life that is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. So anyone who continues to live in Him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning and does not know Him or understand, anyone who keeps on sinning does not know Him or understand who he is. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone. Hallelujah. Hmm. Did I get them all? Oh, no, I didn't. I think I was supposed to go to 10, wasn't I? I was supposed to go to the next one. I'm sorry. Whew. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous. Even as Christ is righteous. So, can you live a righteous life? You sure can. And the only way that you can live a righteous life is through Christ. Hallelujah. Eat of the fruit daily. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Who has been sinning since the beginning. Hallelujah. Listen, I love when God's Word speaks to me. And you know what that speaks to me? 
That speaks to me that if I come in here and I confess that I am a Christian, but I go right back out in this world and I sin, I have lied to myself. I have been deceived by the devil. Because if you are of Christ, you are a sinless person and you do not look to sin when you walk out. Man, I, I, I can't press that enough. Listen, we are called to be holy we are called to be Christ-like. And the only way that we can be Christ-like is not sin. Because Christ did not sin. He was sinless. It was our sins that was put on Him at the cross. He didn't have them in Him. Hallelujah. Get back to where I was before I get off and preach something. Hallelujah. It shows, it shows, it shows where I'm at. Five through ten. I was almost done. I'm sorry. Those who, okay. Mm -hmm. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep sinning because they are children of God. My word, let me stop right there again. I'm going to hold my finger there. Hold on. You shouldn't desire to sin. You shouldn't desire to do wrong to people. You should desire to be like Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You're not going to keep on sinning if Christ is in you. Why is that? I lifted my finger. I'm on 10. I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because our God is a jealous God. When He comes into your heart, He gives you a whole new heart, a whole new life. You're a new creature in Him. You're a brand new person. There is nothing of the world in you when God comes in. Because darkness cannot live where light is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, hallelujah. You're a new creation. There should be a smile on your face. You should not walk out of here in condemnation. The first thing that's going to happen when you walk out the door is all hell's going to break loose in your life again just to see if you was really true. You know why? Because the devil don't know the intentions of your heart. But God does. God knows every intention of man. He knows if you walk up here and if it's of a, if it's of a desiring of him to be changed. Or if it's just for show. He knows it. He knows that. You can't pull the wool over God's eyes. He can pull the wool over yours. Just as he did to Abraham. Abraham didn't see the, the, the ram in the thicket the whole time he was ready and being obedient to God. But once his obedience was there, the bell was lifted and there was the ram. But God knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows your intentions. He knows. Hallelujah. Verse 10. So now we can tell who are the children of God. And who are the children of the devil? Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers do not belong to God. Hold on, I'm going to read that again. Because listen, that needs to really, that, that needs to penetrate the heart of the Christian. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God God said how can you say that you love me when you hate your brother love one another love them love them like they're yourself I mean seriously I mean Think about it. I just want to throw this in there. You know, how you, you know how you can tell if you love someone the same as you love yourself? 
Whenever there's donations for canned, for canned goods, you don't go and buy the cheap junk to bring up here. You go and buy the good stuff that you eat. I just want to throw that in there and let you know. That's a good way to tell, okay? Because if you love your brother like you love yourself, you ain't going to feed them great value green beans when you eat Del Monte. Hallelujah. Mm. Now we're going to turn to chapter 5. We're staying in this book to the end of time. Uh, to the end of this time anyway. Hallelujah. It is a good book to stay in though. I'm telling you, man, it's got so much meat in here. If you're still sucking on the bottle, go to go to First John. You'll start eating meat. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Woo! Chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We are his children, y'all. Okay? He, he goes back. He just keeps saying this over and over and over. That you must love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You must love them. Their family. You're going to spend eternity with them. Well, some of them. But you might as well get to know them now. Because then you're really going to see them as they are when we get there. You're going to be like, hey, you didn't act like that down there. What's up? No, I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. We know that we love God's children if we love God and obey His commandments. Loving God means keeping His commandments. Loving God means keeping His commandments. Loving God means keeping His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win the battle against the world? Woo! Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe? I believe. Hallelujah. All right. John chapter 5, verse 18. And I had to finish out the whole chapter because I just couldn't leave it out. So we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. Because why? After tonight, why? Anybody? Because if you're a sinner, you're not of God. We just read it. Hallelujah. For God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. We know that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. I don't think I have to repeat that passage. We know that the world is absolutely corrupt. That the world is full of evil, full of hate, full of envy, full of pride, full of boastfulness, full of murders, full of everything that was under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we know that the Son of God has come. And He has given us an understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God. Because we live in fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God. And He is eternal life. So I conclude with this. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. Remain camped under the tree of life. Keep away from the tree 
of the knowledge of good and evil because it will lead you astray. But if you keep your eyes focused upon the fruit of the tree of life, you will remain strong and faithful to the end. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hold on one second. So now, I've got to ask everybody on the camera, everybody that's out there that's watching me live, if you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in my spirit. So listen, just close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner, and I need your Son to come and to forgive me of my sins. Only through his blood am I forgiven. So I ask right now, forgive me, Father, in the name of Jesus. For all the sins that I have committed when I was under, camped under the wrong tree. And Father, I'm asking right now that you give me strength to partake of your fruit of the tree of life daily. That I will remain in you. That I will become everything that you said I could become. And I ask all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to say one thing. I tell you, this was, as a young Christian, this was some of the hardest reading I ever had because I wasn't raised in church. And we didn't have all these fancy translations. And I'm reading King James, and I come sailing across 1 John 3, 9 in King James, and it'll slay you. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. I'm like, oh, dear mercy. I, I'm thankful for the New Living Translation. <laughs> Gives a little light to it, right? We don't practice sin. We don't get up in the morning planning. Come on. We don't give place to the devil. We don't make room for it. Walter, thank you, thank you, thank you for that word. I'm, amen. Come on, give, him a, give the Lord a clap offering for his word. Amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. You know, at the entering of God's word, it brings light. And that light shines. And, and, and you know, God uses his word. He'll use somebody to speak that word, and it might, it might shine in areas that you wish would, you know, didn't have a whole lot of light shined onto it. Come on. And, you know, the, the, the most wonderful thing about God and his word is he, he makes provision. Amen. The Bible says, if I will confess my sin, because the same book, 1 John chapter 1, go back to the first of the book, verse 9. If, that, it, that if I will confess my sin, God is faithful. I've been unfaithful, but he's very faithful. He is faithful to forgive. And he, I'm glad he doesn't leave it right there, aren't you? But he washes me. How many of you have experienced the washing that, that he's made me clean? Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. I come out of that church February 19th, 1978, and I, I was washed. All the, uh, it, but you know, he didn't put me on probation. I, I, I hadn't had time to prove whether I was going to keep walking this thing out yet or not. But God loved me too much to leave me the way he found me. And he loves you too much to leave you that way. So he sends that word sometimes that'll just get you. And then he says, but I've made provision for you. Amen. Would you just bow your heads, close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven, and give God thanks that Jesus made a way tonight. Father, we thank you. You're a way maker. You have made a way for me. You, you didn't just cover my sin, <clears throat> but, Master, you came to wash me. And, Father, if there's anyone in this house tonight or watching online, that, God, there's, there's this besetting sin that just keeps troubling them. Lord, I pray right now 
that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you just invite them to bring it to you, to bring it to your altar, just to give it to you. Holy Spirit, I'm not perfect, but you're perfect on the inside of me. Oh, Jesus, let me make it, Father God. <laughs> make me love you and hate, hate that sin. I'm, I'm glad I'm not, I'm not just a, an old sinner just a, a, trying to make it to heaven, but, Lord, I've been born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Bless this word. And, Lord Jesus, I pray that you will just continue to draw men and women to yourself. You're an awesome God. We love you and thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. I don't want to dismiss this service yet. Everybody close your eyes. If you're here, you say, Pastor, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a place and I need God to save me. Just I, I, I feel like I'm so far from him, but I want to be saved. Just lift your hand. Let me say, say that, that's me, Pastor. That's me. Thank you, sir. I see that hand. There's somebody else. Amen. Thank you, sir. I want to be saved. Amen. Walter's already prayed that prayer. And if you prayed that with him, but I just, I want to take you through it one more time. Just from your heart, just tell him, Jesus, I need you. Come into my life. Wash me from this sin and make me white as snow. Lord, your blood was shed so that I could be saved. And I, I, I ask you, Jesus, save my life now. I commit my life to you. Lord, my whole heart is yours. Come in and do the work in me is my prayer in Jesus' name. I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come on, say that out loud. You are my Lord and you are my Savior. And devil, I tell you to get under my feet. I'm not making provision for sin. I'm not practicing it any longer because my life is hidden with Christ in God. I'm a brand new creation. I've been born again by the precious blood of Jesus. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> that, that is a lot more involved. That is a lot more involved prayer than what I prayed back 43 years ago. My prayer 43 years ago, I walked up to the front. I told my grandfather, I said, Pop, you done something for me. Nobody else could. He prayed. I just listened. But I'm telling you, I, the heart turned, and I have never been the same since then. And you won't either. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Walter, thank you for that word. Come on. Somebody shout. God bless you. See you Sunday morning.
top of the stars Never thought we'd ever get this far We live for moments like this We come alive in moments like this Here we are, this is a time Like a dream